The Mexican barrel chair is sometimes called Montezuma's chair, after the ninth Aztec emperor who, as legend has it, enjoyed sitting in one. After the Spanish conquest of the Aztec Empire, these chairs were deemed seats of honor for visiting VIPs. Now considered more rustic than regal, anyone can sit in a chair like Montezuma's. There are various versions produced in Mexico today, many handcrafted using techniques that date back centuries. With a sharp curved blade, the craftsman first splits a chunk of Mexican rosewood into long narrow pieces. He cuts 36 splints for the chair's distinctive lattice work. He pairs down the ends of each splint, and he carves a round head onto each end. These heads will stop the rope from sliding off as he ties the splints together. He pulls the bark away from a much longer piece of wood and then trims it to slimmer dimensions. This wood is fresh from a local shrub called guazima. It's so pliable it's almost elastic, allowing the craftsman to bend it around his knee into a U profile. Too much force and he could crack the wood, too little and the curvature won't be right. A thick nail used on railway tracks is now used as a hammer as he nails a linear piece of wood to a curved one, completing this chair base. He now loops plastic rope around the tips of the two splints and ties them together. He laces the tied splints to holes in the guazima wood base. He angles the top end of the splints diagonally and ties them together to create the chair's trademark lattice. He then arranges the rounded willow wood frame on top and lashes the tied tips to it. He reinforces the chair base with willow wood branches that have been scraped flat. He nails five of these poles to the base of the chair. The next craftsman secures a rounded bundle of willow branches to the protruding holes. This completes the back framework. Another worker now strings rope made of agave plant fiber across the seat framework and ties it to it. He creates a strong yet flexible webbing to support the seat. He splits open some locally grown reeds and flattens them with a stone. Basket weave style, he interlaces the flattened reeds to create a plated material that will be the next layer for the seat. After cutting it to the exact shape and dimensions, he places it on top of the webbing. He then stitches a strip of leather along the border. His co-worker reinforces the plastic ties at the chair base with leather rope. The leather ties also give the base a more finished look. He turns the chair on its side and trims the poles. He also carves slivers of wood from the base so that it's even all the way around, allowing the chair to sit level on the floor. The next worker drapes tanned and stretched pigskin leather over the back framework. He trims it to the contours of the bent willow wood. He covers the reed seat with more leather from the same hide and cuts away the excess. Using a leftover swatch of leather, he applies wax made from pig and cow fat to leather rope. The wax allows the rope to slide easily through holes in the leather, so there are no snags as he stitches the upholstery together. The leather upholstery is now tight and tailored. The next worker sprays mineral dye onto the leather. It's honey-colored for a warmer look and it also hides any minor flaws. After the dye, he applies a protective coat of lacquer. They heat an iron stamp and apply it to the lattice base to brand the wood with the company name. And with that job done, it's time to take a seat. But with so many twists on this ancient design, it could be tough to decide which one.